Okay, hello everyone. This is Austin at Bates Nursery. Um, we're having another round of our Bates Botanical Boot Camp here. Uh, we are in Madison actually at my boy Tyler's house who runs our tech side of everything. Um, in his little garden here, he's got a peach tree. Today's topic is uh, the basics of pruning fruit trees. Now, like I just mentioned, the subject today is a peach tree. You're not going to prune all fruit trees exactly the same, especially a peach. Um, so there's some differences there on, on like where to make cuts for different plants. Um, but there are some basics that we're going to cover today that you kind of want for all of your fruit trees. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about is removing any dead or diseased stems or limbs. That's the first thing. So we don't want that. That causes, you know, issues down the road with pests and certain pathogens. Fruit trees are well known for not being very clean here in Middle Tennessee. What I mean by that is that they live just fine. It's just that they live with issues sometimes. So um, we don't want to, you know, keep that going through the years by keeping some of those dead or diseased branches that are in there. And you can kind of tell what they look like. They're kind of, they, they just look off color. Uh, they could be broken. Uh, and that's spots for pathogens to enter or say insects to enter. So the first step on any fruit tree is to remove all of that nasty, dead, dying or diseased wood. Um, the second thing we need to talk about is airflow. Airflow is real crucial when it comes to fruit trees. We need, for the most part, now with a peach for sure, what we want to create is a vase shape look. So we want the interior of the plant to be pretty clear of leaves and stems so we can get airflow and sunlight down into the main part of the plant. And the airflow is gonna help out with those diseases that I talked about. And it just keeps for a cleaner, much more tidy plant. Um, you want to do that with almost all of the fruit trees, except with an apple tree or a pear tree, we typically keep a central leader system. We don't do that with peaches. With peaches, we're going to have about four, three to four to five main stems that go at a vase shape. Whereas an apple tree or a pear, we want a nice, strong central leader. And then we want stems that come off of that at a good, you know, at a wide angle. That's another thing we need to talk about with most of these things is the branching habit. Sometimes branches want to go real vertical um, and they tend to split whenever they do that. So what we want to keep is stems that go more at a wide angle like this rather than a more acute angle like that. Um, so we'll take those stems as well. Um, another thing that we want to remove is any sucker growth that happens at the base of the plant. It doesn't happen too often, but you will see it sometimes. We want to go ahead and remove that. Um, and then another thing we need to talk about is sprouts that want to go extremely vertical. We want to get rid of those as well. I'm going to show you in just a minute what I'm talking about when it comes to that. So, like I said, the subject today is a peach tree. Tyler has had one here. This is a four-year-old plant. That's all that it is. It's a pretty large plant, and this is a fairly small garden. And Tyler has told me the reason we're coming out here today uh, because it's getting a little big for the spot. He's got another tree right here. It's a fruit cocktail tree that's got four or five different grafts on it. Um, with different with a peach, with a nectarine, with a, what else you got on it? Uh, an apricot and something plum. else on it. And a plum. plum. Yeah. Nectarine, so we got this apricot, tree plum, that we want to keep as well. We sell these at the nursery, by the way, with all these grafted on the same plant. It's a pretty cool idea. Um, but we need room for this to grow. So, uh, you know, before we even talk about fruit production, we need to prune this plant so it's not interfering with this one. That's a whole other thing. A lot of you I know are, are gardening in smaller areas. So pruning is just another way to, you know, keep control of the size. And like I said, this is a four-year-old peach right here. Um, at its height, at its tallest, it's probably about 15, 18 foot. It's gotten pretty big. So we're going to have to shorten it and we're going to make some fairly hefty cuts to um, get this down to about just four to five really sturdy main canes that have a good outward facing shape. Um, and yeah, it's, it's pretty vigorous actually. It's a, peaches grow very fast. So it's like I said, it's only a four year old plant. You can see 18, 20 foot. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty big. So we need to, we need to give it a cut. We need to give it a trim. Um, and that'll help out with our fruit production. Uh, one thing we need to talk about too is, you know, a peach tree this size with all of these buds and stems on it can make a lot of peaches, uh, which is a good thing. At the same time, it can be a bad thing. Um, when peaches get loaded down too much, they get very heavy. So they tend to want to take these stems way down. And what's going to happen is you can get severe breaks in it down lower if you keep 
too much of that fruit on there. We all think we want as much fruit as possible, but that doesn't create a real happy, strong, healthy tree. Um, it, it can cause breakage. Uh, and a lot of that fruit doesn't finish off anyway. So uh, less fruit sometimes is better for the tree and you still get fruit. So Austin, uh, yeah. we, we got somebody also asking, are we going to cover like lemons or limes? Can we like touch on that too? I can touch on it if you want me to. Um, it's a lot different. Uh, cause we don't plant those outside here. They're all containerized and you have to bring them inside your home. Uh, but we can touch on that if you want to. I'll tell you what, I'll bring my orange out from the garage and, uh, at the end we'll, we'll talk about Give it. it. A look. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Sounds good. All right. We got some work to do, so I need to go ahead and get started here. Uh, the tools we're going to need, I've got hand pruners. I've got some loppers, pretty heavy duty ones. And I've even got a chainsaw because we're going to have to make some pretty hefty cuts on this thing. So, like I said, I want to get it down to about four to five main stems. First thing I need to do, though, is to make very quick, just decisive cuts um, that I know that I don't need. So I can see um, down below right here what's going to happen with a peach is you're not going to get sunlight to a stem, say, like this. That's not going to get hardly any light. It's going to be a very non-productive stem limb. Um, and I don't really want it. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to find the stems that I, I know that I want to cut and just get rid of right off the rip. And then I can look, judge it better um, after that. Austin, so let's, Austin, we have another question from up? Sharon. Uh, would an older Santa Rosa plum be treated similar to a peach? Um, yes, it is. More so than like an apple or a pear. Uh, so yeah, if it's getting old, um, you, you may send me some pictures or something. Maybe I can help you look at it. But yeah, you want to get that down to a, to a multi-stemmed, you know, like a three to five main stem with an open center habit, very similar to a peach. Oh yeah, and we're doing it this time of year because this is the time to prune fruit trees. We do it in the, when they're dormant, that's why you can see it without having leaves all over it. Um, and we want to avoid doing it like when they're juiced up in the spring, like getting ready to leaf out because you start making wounds on that and you start seeing a lot of oozing uh, coming out because of those saps and sugars that are moving up through the, through the plant. Um, try to avoid that as well. So we're going to do it dead dormancy, which is January, mid-January is a good time to do it. So let's go ahead and make our first few cuts and just get what we want gone underneath limb, non-productive, not doing anything. You can, you don't have to go super tight to this stem. You can leave a little bit of a nub. It's not a big deal. It's going to heal back over anyway. Um, also, like I said, this stem, very, it's going to be non-productive. It's not needed. It's just waste. waste. So go ahead and get that removed. It's another little limb. Ain't doing much. We really don't need it. This one, dead or dying. You can see this one's off color. Doesn't have a lot of buds. Not needed. Get rid of the little ones. I might end up taking this whole limb. I'm not sure yet. I just need to make some more cuts to um, see where I'm at. This is another under limb that's not going to get a lot of light. Probably not worth it. Let's get rid of it. Anything growing toward the interior of the plant we want to get rid of. I can see this right here. It's a little high. I got a ladder as well I'm probably going to have to use. If y'all can see this limb right here, you see how it's going super upright and it's going towards the interior of the plant. We want everything going out this way, vase shape. So let's take that big sucker stem that's just going upright. Don't need it. All right. This one here, y'all see this? Super productive limb going up towards the interior of the plant. Straight up, we want to avoid that get rid of that one all right now I don't see any more this one's kind of going interior this little limb right here is getting over into this tree that's the main reason I'm gonna cut it it's also pretty small wouldn't produce a lot anyway so let's go ahead and get rid of it all right and a weird bundle with an upright here on the interior. Let's get rid of that. I, oh, uh, yeah. What, another thing I didn't mention is we need to avoid uh, crossing limbs whenever they can rub against each other. That's another reason to make a cut. You can see right here what I was talking about, these two limbs that are interfering with each other. They're just going to just kind of compete with each other, really. It's not, it's not something we need. So let's keep the bigger one. It's got a good outward shape. And get rid of this one that's crossing this one. another little stick that was kind of dying on us all right got another upright here it's wanting to go towards the interior go ahead and make that like i said this first cut is just kind of our decisive cuts we just know we need to get rid of it just just do it we can think about it later that one. 
that one. All right, so I've got a really open crown right now, which I will say Tyler's done a good job of doing this. Most peaches that I come across that people haven't pruned are like all mangled up in the center and they need a lot of attention on the interior of the plant. Tyler's done a good job of keeping this thing at the shape that we need it. So it's not actually all that bad. It's just that he's got a small space and we need to lessen this tree a little bit. Another stem I see up there, don't really like. <clears throat> Okay, step back and look at it. Made our first few cuts. Oh, I see one, y'all see that one I missed? This right here, going very upright, vertical towards the center of the plant. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Use my loppers for that one. All right. Okay, this has got a funny look to it. Honestly think we're just gonna be competing for light if we keep this whole stem. I've got a really nice one here and this one's kind of just, it's small and it's not my favorite. I've got another limb over here that I'm definitely gonna keep. It's a very productive stem that's going way out. I don't think this is needed at all. Let's get more light in here. I'm just gonna take the whole thing. Go ahead and just get rid of it. Use a chainsaw for that. It's an electric chainsaw. Kind of cool. Oh, awesome! The cord pulled out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's important to some of these chainsaws have or electric chainsaws have a little thing that can hang onto the cord. So it's important to do that um, when you use one. Pretty big limb we got rid of. Put that to the side. All right, I can take that down further. Uh, I cut that a little high. I'm just trying to get it done, but you could probably take that and get you a little handsaw actually probably and get in there a little bit tighter so you don't make a wound on the other side of the stem and just shave that back a little bit tighter than what I did. But we just needed to get it removed so I can look at it. All right, I got another one here. This lower limb here. See, that's what I'm saying. I want to try to get this down to like a four or five cane scenario. So we have to take some of these limbs um, that are smaller. I'm just going to go ahead and keep the bigger ones. This one here, if y'all can see that, once you see that it's not around anymore, we still have it's plenty open back here. And we're not having these limbs compete with each other over here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. That one. All right. Pretty open. Got another limb over there. This here. Biggest reason for cutting this is that it's interfering with this tree. It's gonna get less light on this one. So I need to get rid of it. I wouldn't necessarily have to get rid of it um, if this were just a freestanding peach. But since it is going out this way, I need to go ahead and remove it to open up for more light. All right, got that one done. It's starting to see a little bit more open. I've got three limbs right here that I see that are all doing the same thing, going in the same direction, causing less light, causing less airflow. I don't like that. So I'm going to remove the middle one. Get rid of this one, that'll create space in between these two limbs that we're gonna keep. And we're gonna thin this one out to open it up. So where is that limb? Austin, is this, is this kind of just like a getting a feel for it thing? Like if you prune enough, you kind of get, get an idea because uh, the way you're selecting branches is lovely. And I just... <laughs> I've pruned a lot of fruit trees in my life. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of trial and error, I guess, and just picking. Um, a fruit tree that's well established like this peach, it's almost impossible to, to kill it by pruning it. It's gonna, be, it's gonna bounce back so vigorously. You could literally take a chainsaw and cut 
here, 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 major wounds. I mean, take it down to here if you wanted to. The plant's coming right back. You're not gonna kill it. It's gonna form new buds and it'll form new shoots. You'll see it shoot like crazy, actually. I don't recommend doing that. I'm doing it how I think we should do it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just picking limbs that you, that you just observe and you see and you, and you pick which ones you need to take. And this one, like I said, is one that's just, I don't need all this growth right here. It's all together. I wanna get rid of that. Here's a stick. Broken like that. So yeah, I'm just gonna open this up. And it is, it's just fun. I mean, it's just trial and error, really. I mean, you're gonna mess with your fruit production just a little bit because you're taking off a lot of these branches, but we need to prune this thing. It's getting too big. You're still gonna get plenty of fruit, trust me. Oh, I trust you. <laughs> All right, let's take this limb, the middle one. I'm do whoppers. All right. Okay, so let's step back. I'm gonna see what y'all are looking at. All right. We're doing pretty good. I have a lot going on over here to the right whole lot of limbs that are in there and i'm wondering here okay, if you so get over, over there austin point huh? it out a little bit if you okay. get over there point it out so like i got a lot of stems right here big hefty ones too they're all kind of going in the same direction not what i want i'm not going to take that yet because we might can use it and just shorten it but like this limb here it's up underneath this nice one here. So it'd be one of two things. For me, I would almost want to take this big one to take this, this vertical growth out of it. But it's such a nice limb that I kind of hate to. Welcome to my nightmare. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been looking at that branch for two years. Like, which way should I take it? I know. And if it were earlier in its life... We should, probably should have just taken it early and we could have kept this one because this is actually the shape that we want. We want this angle going out rather than a vertical habit like that shooting straight up. I mean, obviously, you know, if you're not very mobile, you want to maximize access to the fruit at ground level. Am I exactly. right? Exactly. That's another thing. Shorten the height a little bit so you don't have to be up on a ladder. We have a question from Don. What about pruning the, the top? Uh, we haven't got there yet. But I will get there. And you are going to shorten it. I'm, I'm going to have to shorten this thing a little bit. That's fine by me. You know what, Tyler? I think, I think maybe we should just take the big one. What do you think? You okay with that? Um, as the kids say, YOLO. No guts, no glory. <laughs> go big or go home. I, gotta, I, got, I can go all day. <laughs> I think we're going to do it. I think I just want to open that up. See how it looks without it. Now, do know, once you make a cut, it's done. So make sure you, you're cool with it before you do it. That's going to open it up a lot, though. You know what we can try first? Always make a, if you're if you're unsure about the whole big cut, let's make a cut up above it first and see what it looks like after that. So what I do have here is off of this main stem here, in the vertical habit of that, I've got this side shoot right here. It actually looks pretty good. So let's cut above that first and see how it looks. And then if I need to take it further, then we will. Oh my God, Tyler. <clears throat> hey man, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like keeping a lot of gasoline around the house. <laughs> and we're, we're not on a very big property here, so it's, it's not like I'm gonna take the gator down <laughs> to the back 10 acres and... Yeah. <laughs> All right, big limb removed. Hey, here's here's a fun bit. Um, you could use this wood for smoking stuff, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I think people do that. Peach wood, apple wood. Uh huh. Um, I'm not a chef myself, but I think people do do that. Yeah, if you have a barbecue lover in your family, you might want to look at at uh, cutting the wood down a little bit more and and yeah, throwing in a smoker. And I've got a limb here, just a little bitty guy. As you work, you'll see, you'll find more as you go, almost all the time. 
this little one going towards that one. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> it's really up. opening up. I think I can see your vision of opening up the tree. What's that? I can really see your vision of opening up the tree. Yeah, trying to get it, get it open and airy is really what we want. And I am going to shorten it here in a minute. I kind of like this stem. It's a little smaller. It's got a good angle. Maybe we'll just shorten it later. I'm going to worry about that later. Okay, Sharon's, got, about, huh? Sharon's got another question. Is it, is it advised to go ahead and trim away the new shoots that will start to shoot out in the spring from those areas where a large limb was cut? Oh, yeah. If you see, like, sucker growth happen from that spot, like a whole lot of them, which does happen sometimes, actually. It, it wants to throw a ton of buds. Uh, yeah, you can remove those when they're young like that. Just, just get rid of them. Um, but hopefully after we do this, we're going to kind of maintain a schedule every year and you won't have to, you know, make such, you know, pronounced cuts. This one's never been cut on, so that's why we're, we're making some pretty hefty ones to, to just get rid of them. There's a dead or diseased or dying piece of wood. Get rid of that. To interior. Small little cuts. All right, I got something over here going on. I got crossing. Crossing branch here with this one. It's also just got a lot right here. I don't think that it's needed. I like this branch. I've got a real nice stem going up that way. Let's go ahead and remove this one. You can really take this one first. No, let's leave that. Let's take this one all the way. All right. Open that up and it exposes other limbs. Did I see this one? Interior growth going that way. Don't want it. Get rid of that. I got a dead stick over here. Take that. Interior growth here. You can even see like the wood's weaker on the inside. It just doesn't get the light that it needs. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. All right. How many stems we got? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's generally. We tend to say three or four stems. That's about all you need. Um, but I don't know. I like the shape this thing's take, starting to take. Me too. Um, because of this tree here, once again, uh, it kind of dictates what we're going to do for the long haul. So as much as I like this stem right here, it's going in a bad direction for the future. It's going right over top of this one. I think we're going to have to take it. It's a pretty big cut. It's okay. It's going to be pretty low. We're going to take it all the way close to the trunk with a chainsaw. And just going to have to do it. All right. This will be our biggest cut so far. It's probably going to land right on that tree. called it all right that's our biggest branch so far okay got something going here let me step back and look at it what y'all are looking at all right that's pretty open and airy huh what else do we need all right got a lot of good wood right in here down below I'm thinking about now is a dead stick. Thinking about now how I'm going to shorten it. I think that I've got the shape where I want it, except for back here. Cut this stem away. Cut that one. Got these two sticks rubbing right here. See, I didn't even notice that earlier. I see it now. Once I've removed some stuff, let's go ahead and get rid of that. The angle of this shoot is really tight, very acute angle. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. All right. Lower stems. Upright growing habit. Get rid of that. Okay. We've got a nice open canopied peach tree now. Looks pretty good. I might have to get a ladder out to shorten this thing because we're going to have to shorten it. 
Got a lot of sticks up in here that are kind of too much. Kind of don't really need this stem. Starting to reach out over into the garden anyway. I've got this one. It's got such a nice habit to it. It's going to shade out what's down below, which is this one. Now for um, Austin, for like an apple tree, would you, would you have some similar considerations for this kind of pruning? For what I'm doing, the basics, yeah, like what I've talked about a little bit with the basics, not the vase shape though. That's why I said earlier, we want to keep a main leader system on an apple. So you're going to pick its main leader when it's young and you're going to have offshoots off of that. Uh, but the angles I'm talking about, acute angles, get rid of them. Interior growth, get rid of them. And crossing stems, get rid of them as well. Yes, it's, it's a similar approach, but it is a little bit different. All right, I'm going to get rid of this branch. I don't want it. It's too low. That'll open up a nice area in the bed for planting under. Yeah, exactly. If you want to get some sun-loving plants under here. But this plant's going to shoot. You're going to see it. it. It's Like I said earlier, peaches are vigorous, so you're going to see a huge response out of this thing. But once we get this thing done, then our, our pruning will be minimal year to year. Now, uh, for peaches and other fruiting trees, uh, what, what part of the tree or the wood does the, does the fruit actually bud on? Two different types of buds. Let me get one. I'll get it from a stick I've already cut. All right. Try to find it. It's the... Uh, let's try to find some vegetative buds. Okay. So it's the fuzzy ones. You see that good? Where are we at? Hold on a second. Let me, I'm going to cutting to our camera now. Okay. You good? Yep. All right. So the fuzzy buds, the ones right in here that are going to be your fruit producing buds. And then your vegetative buds are going to be up higher on the stem, usually more around the tips. And they're not going to be fuzzy at all. They're going to look a little bit different. Okay. Can you hold it really still? And bring it down just a hair, yeah, and point at it. Those are the fuzzy okay. fruit-producing buds. The other buds that just look like dormant buds, that it's hard to really tell. But all you need to know is that the, the, the fuzzy ones are the ones that are going to produce the peach. <clears throat> Little sticks just clean up as you go. And it's really just looking at it, just playing with it. I haven't seen this tree until today, so I had to really just observe it, look at it, uh, see where I'm at. All right, I don't really like this stem. Starting to want to go that way towards that one. Go ahead and remove that. All right. Okay, I think we're pretty good. Now I think I'm just gonna shorten this thing. This next year's crop's gonna be less like I've talked about. But we need to get this done because it's a small area. So let's go ahead and shorten this thing. The stem's getting kind of long. Uh, so kind of like this little grouping of stems going out right here, making a, it's got a good little grouping to it. So let's go ahead and shorten all the way back to this. Yeah, I still have some nice branching in there. Looking pretty good. All right, I've got a good stem here. This one right here, it's going outward, which is really what we want. And I need to shorten it, because this stem specifically is shading out this tree. So, I think I'm gonna cut right above this one. I'll maybe go a little higher. I'll go higher at first, and then we'll, we can shorten later if we need to. I need this ladder. You say citrus? Yeah, I think I might have muted my microphone. We're going to do uh, a little um, demonstration of citrus at the towards the end of the webinar. All 
All right, y'all be careful doing this. Wish me luck. All right. Is this stem I wanted to keep? So let's try to make a cut. Actually, I'm gonna go a little higher. Go over right here. Oh my God. Hand me those loppers. <laughs> but, oh, I'll get them. <laughs> I think I can make this cut with <laughs> them. Oh, okay. Let's actually go. A nice stem going out that way. Got an interior one. It just opened its head up. Take that away. And yeah, take that one too. How's that look? Pretty good, Tyler. You know what? I'm going to shorten it just from a little here. more. Go up into here. Get rid of that. You notice I kept this nice stem going that way. So we want. You can shorten that if you wanted to. I'm going to leave it. Got a stem going in. All right, here. Remove that. All right. Let me look at it. See what y'all are seeing. All Austin, right, so you are you are amazing to keep up with. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now let's just work our way around the tree, shortening it at about the same level as I went with this one. And see where we're at from there. All right, I've got an understem here. It's getting a little wide on me. Starting to get out into this tree, out into the yard too much. Go ahead and take that. And then let's shorten. Got a good stem here. It's working its way out. Shorten that. Pretty good. Next stem. Got a very couple very vertical. Limbs going wrong direction. Upright. A little stick here. Down below, very unproductive. This one as well. All right. Don't mind that too much. It's not terrible. I'd like to shorten it though because the stem. It's not all that fat. I prefer this stem to beef up a little bit so it can hold more weight. So I think I do want to take it back. This limb's going to be fairly unproductive because it doesn't have a lot of buds on it. But I do think I need to shorten it. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's just take it into here. I don't allow for this stem to get fatter. That's what I want. Go ahead and do that. Work our way around. Just gonna shorten this stem a little bit because a long, thin stem is not gonna hold up much weight. So we need to go ahead and shorten. Let's go into here. Got an interior growth happening there. Get rid of that. And that's a good little limb there. Get sturdier and stronger to hold up more weight. This one over here, I've got a kind of a Nasty looking branch, like I said earlier, get rid of that. Branch going towards the interior right here. Let's go ahead and remove. See, that's what I was telling you earlier. These things don't present themselves early. You have to work your way through it and just keep working with it and see, find more stems as you go. All right, I like this limb. It's got an outward facing habit. This one I don't. Very upright, vertical towards the center. Let's remove that first. Ah. 
Yeah, it's much better looking. Austin, uh, are there any other pruning uh, gear uh, that you recommend, or do you think loppers and... Mainly chain? this. I will say a nice little hand saw, a little folding hand saw that you can open up just, that works pretty well. That if you keep them sharp, uh, they work pretty well for a task like this. But generally, this is kind of all you need. If you're pruning multiple fruit trees, I probably should mention, like, since I'm doing the same one, I can use the same loppers and, and um, pruners for all of my cuts. If I were doing an orchard or something, I was going through multiple trees. After you finish one tree, you need to kind of sterilize these with alcohol or something, uh, just so you don't pass on anything from tree to tree, if there were anything to pass on. All right, these limbs are nice. I like the look of that, but I need to shorten. Got a great stem going out that way here. Let's cut right above it. Keep that. Yeah, we got this a, one's a little long. I just want to shorten it. We got a question from Mark here. Uh, on the limbs that are going wider, can you tie them uh, to a branch on the opposite side to pull it more upright? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. You could do that. It'll take probably a couple seasons to kind of kind of get it where you want it. Uh, but yeah, it's not a bad idea. I think people do that. All right, is this limb done? This limb's about done. We'll shorten this long one. To about there. It's pretty good. I don't see any crossing. Just noticed on the last one that I left, I left this limb a little too long. This one's a little long. This one's a little long. This one's a little long. Let me just step back and look. Looking pretty good. Need to do some more shortening. Got a lot of growth right here on this stem, this whole area. Got too much to it. And I've got a sprout going, I can see it up there going vertical. I want to get rid of that. I want to create light. So out of these three stems that I've got, I'm going to take the middle one. That way we can get light into both of them. Open that up a little. I was talking about this stem here. Going that way. Let's get rid of it. I like this stem got a good habit to it but I need to shorten it a little I'll shorten that other stem in just a second limbs kind of going in uh, up here. we got a question from Ryan can you talk a little bit more in detail about where you're deciding to make the shortening cuts just above vertical growth um, really just above the bud that you want to keep i know i'm kind of going quick and i'm not really this is such a vigorous tree that it doesn't really matter too too much where you cut it but just you general rule of thumb or really what you want to do is cut it above the bud that you want to keep so so like plant, let, let's say let's say that branch that's right in front of you um which one the one that's like right above your head just right yeah. This? Yeah, let's say, okay, you wanted to select a bud to keep from that. Where would you go? Okay, with, with this one, it's going to be a, a heavier cut, so it's going to be a whole limb that I'm going to want to keep. So, like, I want to shorten it pretty good on this one. So, this is a limb that I kind of like. It's It's got potential for me. So, I'm cutting it right above that limb, and I'll be left with this stick. So that, that on the end is, is going to be where you're training the direction of the branch? Yes, that's, what we, that's the whole point. We want that branch to go in the direction that we want. While I'm up here, I can see a branch that's not going in the direction we want right here. So we just remove the whole thing. And shortening a little bit as we go. This one here, another good limb right here that I want to keep going in the direction that we want. Right above that, make our cut. So that's going where we want it. These two limbs right here are eventually going to cross. Let's go ahead and remove one of them. Take it totally to the stem. All right. I need to shorten that big one. I need to find the limb that I want to keep, and I'm going to cut right above it. 
while I'm here, I'm going to shorten this a little bit. Long, thin stems want to break. All right. I'm really kind of thinking. I might take this whole limb. It's going up so tall. I've got such a good start here. And maybe I should just remove this whole thing to shorten it. I think I'm going to do that. Austin, if, if we can, uh, uh, here in a minute, just segue to the citrus, see if we can touch on that. Um, I went ahead and put my lime tree in front of you. I see that. <laughs> it's, the, it's the only green thing out here, <laughs> except for the weeds. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how many, when you want it? I got like just a few more cuts to make. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do that. Good. If I can get in there. That's a big one. Would you consider this slow TV? <laughs> Watching somebody prune a tree. <laughs> Alright, made a pretty big cut there. It's good though. Needed to shorten it. Needed to get my angles wide. That was a good cut. <clears throat> Alright, one more big one. Need to address. Let's see. All right. This limb here. Need to shorten. I like the direction of this going that way. I don't really like the way that limb is turning up. See, I'm trying to just figure out which limb I want to cut. Either go up there, cut above it. Or look at this one and cut right above it, which I think is what I'm going to do because I don't really like the way that's turning up. Let's make one more nice cut on that. All right. Pretty good looking fruit tree now. Looking a little bit more manageable, a little bit more tame. It is. Don't let it fool you though, it's gonna bust in the spring. You see a lot of fresh growth. You're gonna have to clean it up in the early spring. Uh, Cause like uh, that guest said earlier on, on in her question, you'll, you'll probably see a lot of vigorous shoots sprouting, mainly cause we opened it up so much, you might see sprouts in the center. Um, so we'll clean this back up in the spring again with minimal cuts, smaller cuts, cause it's gonna be smaller wood. Um, for annual upkeep, Sharon is asking, um, on a tree, such as a sour cherry or a plum, how much shortening would branches need each winter? Depends on, it. I'd have to look at it. It kind of depends on how big it's gotten. Um, but, you know, you don't really have to do any, any like heavy pruning at all on a fruit tree if you don't really want to. I'm kind of doing it on this one mainly just to show y'all and to, because we're in a small space, uh, that we need to shorten it. But really, if you do your, your homework and you do it early and you prune this thing to, you know, like I was saying earlier, a four to five main stem system early in its life, then really the top growth, as long as you're getting rid of crossing wood on the interior and keeping that center clean, that's about all you have to do. It's not a ton of maintenance. You don't have to make huge hefty cuts like I'm doing to, to make it smaller. If you, if you have the space for a plum tree, train it young to get the stems where you want them. And then after that, you can let it be a nice round canopy tree. Uh, with minimal pruning, just the, you know, the, the dead or diseased wood, and then the, also the interior stuff and the crossing. All right, and um, when should you fertilize peach or nectarine trees? When they're actively growing in the spring, that's whenever the nutrients are available. Um, so that's when you want to do it. Whenever they first start leafing out in the spring, go ahead and get them fertilized. All right, I got a few sticks in here. I'm just going to... It's not too bad. Still want to keep some of these stems because I want Tyler to have some fruit this year. But I'm going to shorten some of these. It's too long to hold peaches. Those are a little long up in there.
cut that one and then shorten this tip. Hopefully I'm gonna try to cut this limb like I was talking about earlier to get it in a direction that we want. It's a nice limb, so I'd hate to take all of it, but I can cut it above a bud that's going a different direction and hopefully get this thing going at a better direction. Now we don't, we don't have to linger on this very much, but uh, it, uh, nut trees, is there a pruning method for those or you just kind of let those go? Uh, you're talking about like, talking about like pecans? Yeah, pecans. Generally you just let them go. Okay. I've never really heard of anyone pruning them all that much. They're pretty slow growing, so they really don't take much. Um, but as trees go, y'all, this ain't just fruit trees. I mean, when they're young like that, getting rid of, rid of those branches that you see that are not gonna be good, they're gonna rub, they're gonna cross. Just get them when they're young and it'll help out down the road. Short yeah, that long. was just an extra credit question. <laughs> All right, are we at a are we at a moment where we can uh, do the citrus? What do you think? Are you happy with it? Does your I peach mean, tree look good now? It looks incredible. Let me see. It's reduced. It's it feels like it's going to be a lot easier to pick when it makes new fruit. I think it is. If I looked at this tree longer, I could make cuts on this thing all day long, probably. But I think as a basic fruit tree prune, I think this is a pretty good one. You're going to see that's some bleeding out of some for. of these stems, huh? They said that's what we're going for here. Okay. All right, guys. I think I'm done with it. I think it's good enough. Like I said, I keep looking at this thing. I'm going to find more cuts to make. Is it addicting? It kind of is. I love pruning. It's like my favorite thing to do. Is it one of those things when you clean that it just kind of like you can zone out? And... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could do this all day. I love pruning fruit trees. I love opening them up. I just love to see the interior. I love to see where the airflow is going to go, or where the light's going to get. Uh, and make for some nice quality peaches, hopefully. Well, I've sampled the peaches from this tree last year. Oh, yeah? And it is a, it is a good tree. Cool. What, what variety is this? Alberta. That's uh, an old one. The Alberta peach. Can't beat it. All right. All right, I'm putting the pruners up. I'm done. Okay. What are we doing? Citrus? Y'all need to... We need to prune them? Uh, well, pull, pull that back a little bit. Um, to try and get it in shot. You might need to just lift it up or put it on the ladder. Uh, somebody's asking, is this pruning, I get, I guess this pruning is good for plum trees too. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. Plums are pretty quick to shoot too. They're very similar to peaches, so you'll see a quick response out of those. Hey, T.Y., you got a little lime on here. I do, but it hasn't, it hasn't gone anywhere. It hasn't gotten bigger. <laughs> I've got a grow light on it in the garage. Ah, it's a little chilly. It'd be all right. Uh, so yeah, y'all, citrus doesn't live here outside in the ground. Uh, we have to keep these in containers. We have to move them into our house into the brightest light you can give them. Think about where these things live. That's what we want to do with all plants is mimic where they naturally live. Uh, these are grown in Florida, down in Southern Texas. Um, so they don't handle our winters here. You got to keep them in a pot and you got to keep them in a sunny location. You know, this plant specifically right here, I wish I had a bigger one because really, I don't want to do too much cutting on this thing. It doesn't have a ton to it. Uh, give me one second. I'll get you an orange tree. Is it bigger? It's uh, it's about three years old. It's still in a pot. Let me look at it. If I were going to do while he's gone, if I were going to do any pruning, I'm going to do it the same way as I told you about this one. I'm going to open it up. I just can't help myself. Got to get rid of those little guys. All right, so I got a stem. It's going to be hard for y'all to see this. Oh, wow. Cool. Set her down. We'll get to it, Nick. All right. I got a limb on the interior here. I see. Towards the center of the plant. Let's get rid of that. Step back and look at it. It's really not terrible, Tyler. It's kind of young to really be pruned too much. I got um, it from the nursery this year, just a couple you? months ago. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Cool. So this is what you it would look like if you did get it from the nursery. It's got a, a few months of growth on it before it got cold. Got some rubbing going on. Just like with the other one, get them off of each other, open it up. Another one towards the interior growing in. So you don't really want those branches crossing, no matter no. what? No, not at all. They'll start rubbing, they'll create a wound, create an entry site for pathogens and pests. Want to avoid that. 
Citrus is real bad about getting scale, which is another little insect that just hangs on to the, the stems mainly and leaves. Keep an eye out for that. You'll start to see little yellow patches on them. If they start getting on the leaves, you'll see little yellow rings. You know you got a bug problem at that point. You need to get something sprayed on it because it's they'll they'll mess up a citrus pretty quick. Yeah, Austin has actually done a webinar on common houseplant pests, and that's available on our archive. Um, very handy one to have. We actually use a microscope, and we go in there and look at the bugs up close, look at the damage so you can see uh, what's going on and treat it. All right, so I'm just opening it up, y'all, getting rid of limbs that are going to be unproductive. I've got a very tight crotch angle right here is what that angle. Uh, very acute. Let's get rid of that. I don't like it. Give that limb plenty of room. Kind of touching limbs there. Let's get rid of that. In a pretty open center. Got a lot of stems that are going in the direction they want to. It's got a good look to it. Bushy up top. Like I said, this is a young tree. We don't really have to do much pruning on it. Uh, we can let it start growing. You can make bigger cuts later. But that's not that bad. That angle's kind of bad. If anybody has any other questions they'd like to submit to, you know, we're, we're pretty much at the Q&A portion, so submit away. Slim going in. That's a good little shape, huh? I like that. Do you? I mean, it's a it's a bush. I want it to keep it bushy. I don't want it too tall. Okay. I want it. I want it move. You know, to be able to move it inside and out. Yeah. Do you? You could shorten this if you wanted to. If you really wanted to create more of a bushy habit, would you just take all the tips right above the bud we were talking about that you want to keep? So, do you want me to do that, Tyler? Uh, do not? it. Do it on one of the sides. I want to see it. Okay. So, just shortening to create bushiness is really all we're doing. This plant's gonna wanna leaf out, and when it does, it's gonna leaf out from kind of the tips, maybe three or four or five stems, and it'll create this thing to get longer. If we cut that in there shorter, then we can get the growth from the interior more, and it'll create just a little bit bushier habit. So don't think about it too, too much. Just go above the leaf you wanna keep and prune it right above it. We're just gonna shorten this thing a little bit. Shorten, shorten. Austin, can you step to the other side so we can get that detail shot? Yeah. I'm gonna shorten this wild limb here. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it all the way around, Tyler. I think it needs it. Take that away, because there's too many there. That's probably fine. We've got a question from Laura. Does it matter if the limbs are still green? That uh, no, that's just the, it just means they haven't hardened off yet, so they're, they're young, uh, you know, real young stems, so they're that real green. As it ages, you can see how the stem gets more, more looking like bark. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to making cuts, it's not that big of a deal if it's green or if it's not. So where am I? This is a little long. Let's go ahead and take that. Take this one that's getting wild. Above the leaf I want to keep. This one here. This one here. When you start making cuts on this citrus, you ought to smell it. It smells to me, it smells exactly like uh, Fruit Loops. Don't know why. No, I thought it smelled like tricks myself. Tricks, and, yeah, They're similar. But you can you can throw it in dishes. Those leaves uh -huh. uh, and 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 or or um, curries. I mean soups. It, it's a really great fr flavoring leaf. Kind of freshens it up. It does. I used some lime leaves in a recent dish, and it was incredible. I just keep mine around mostly for that. The That's fruit's cool. extra. I didn't know that. All right. I don't think I need any more cutting on this. I've shortened it a little bit to make it bushy. I've gotten any limbs off that are rubbing or touching against each other. Got tiny little limbs that I took away. I just didn't need. We got another question from Julie um, and, and Carrie. It looks like uh, they have an, a fruit tree that, that definitely fruits but doesn't mature. Uh, it looks amazing early on and then starts to rot on the vine. Do you have any recommendations for yeah, that? It depends. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be some sort of brown mold, uh, gray mold. Like I was saying earlier, we could do a whole webinar probably on pathogens when it comes to fruit trees. They're not clean here in Middle Tennessee. What I'd recommend you do if it's happening every year is potentially get a, um, a sample taken from your tree and send it to the Ellington Ag Center. Just so all y'all know this, it's a really good way to do it. What they can do is they're plant pathologists that work there and they can look at it under a microscope and they can see what kind of actual pathogen you might have, which sounds like you do if this is recurring every year. And they'll tell you what to do to fix it, whether it's a foliar spray, whether it's a soil drench, uh, whether you have the pathogen down in the soil. Uh, but they'll be able to tell you that and you can send in samples. I'd give them a call first and see about how you do that. I think you more or less just send it in a bag and just send it off to them. 
Uh, but you may give them a call and see. Uh, that's a good way to test. I can help out on the on the macro level, whereas they can look at it on the microscopic level. But I, if I can see it and I see pictures of it, I can hopefully maybe determine what's going on and how we can help. Because it sounds like you're going to have to get on a spray regimen to kind of combat that. <clears throat> All right. Citrus tree. That looks great. That looks good. It's cute, huh? Now, what about what about the orange? It's a little wildy on the bottom. It's got some shoots going. Sure does. Let's look at it. Oh! All right. So, this is cool because y'all can see it's sucker sprouts, which is what they like to do. I like more of a tree form habit myself. You could potentially leave these if you want to. Uh, I like to just get rid of them. It's just all on the interior. I just don't like it. So that freshest sucker growth that's coming from the roots or real low, you want to remove. And they'll probably try to do it again in the spring when it warms up. You'll probably see more sucker growth. Just remove it as it comes up. It's easiest to do at that point. Get rid of that hole. And this would apply to grapefruit, right? Yeah, all citrus. Uh, what about pomegranate? Is that a weird one? Uh, pomegranate's a little different. Yeah, it's a different fruit altogether. Pomegranate, actually, there is a variety that grows here and can live here through the wintertime. We sell it at Bates. Um, haven't had people had great success with it, I'm not going to lie. But we do sell it, so that's a whole different topic, though. All right. So what do we see here? Interior limbs crossing with this one. This limb right here is not really something I want to keep. Get rid of it to open it up. Let me look at it. Got a wonky stem there. Going real sideways. It's not like it's hurting anything. It just kind of looks funny. So I want to get those leaves off each other, so I'm going to go ahead and make that cut. It's almost looking like a bonsai now. I know. I got a bad problem doing that, too. Making things look like trees. And this limb is going way over here. Let's go ahead and remove that. Just a fun fact, this orange tree was actually grown from a grocery store orange. <laughs> Which one? Was it a navel? I believe it was a navel. Yeah. And, um, it wrapped it in a paper towel for a couple days, a wet paper towel. It sprouted, and then I, the rest has just been its eagerness to live. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Y'all be careful when you're doing this. These things got some gnarly spines on it. Yeah, if you don't actually purchase a, like, a grafted orange tree, you're going to find that it produces spines, and it's sharp. Yeah, like real bad. Okay. Tyler, how much more you want me to take off of this, if any? Doesn't oh, that's really, it. That that looks nice and trim. Thank doesn't you. Doesn't really need any more. I can shorten it if you want me to, all around like we did before. Um, only if you think so. I mean, it's, it's probably about three years old. Okay. I really haven't shortened it. I've just tried to train it a little. Let's shorten just a little. Try to get a lot of fresh bud growth. Um, additionally, guys, Austin has uh, done a webinar, uh, which we are getting online uh, probably in the next day or so, Demystify demystifying fertilizer labels. That's really handy with some of your fertilizer questions about requirements for tree, what you need. Um, it's a really good going over, and it kind of cuts through the, the crap, the haze, around all these different fertilizers that we have. These two limbs are kind of getting into each other. Let's shorten one of them. All right. Nothing wrong with that. Not the greatest shape on earth, but we can mess with it as the years go on. You're a regular Edward to scissor hands. Thank you. <laughs> a little less goth. <laughs> Okay. All right. It's about all you need, but generally, y'all, uh -huh. we don't really prune citrus trees all that much because we just kind of keep them in our house. Let them get big. The more limbs you got, the more flowers you got, the more fruit you could potentially have. So get them in a nice finishing pot, something that's going to be large, and let them grow and get big, and then just minimal pruning just to keep limbs off each other. Joanna, my, my grow light timing is, I think it turns on at 6 a.m., and then it cuts off at 8 p.m. That's cool. Thank you for attending, Carrie. Appreciate you. Um, I guess that's about, are we ready to wrap up? I think that's pretty much all we got. I like the look of this peach tree now. Get this down, let's look at it one more time. Already said it, vase shape, open habit, open, ha open habit. Uh, good airflow in the interior. 
And I think we did good. Thank you all for watching today. Any yeah. more questions? Are we good? I, I, we don't have any more questions. Um, we, I just want to say that if you have any other questions or hesitations, please feel free to email info at batesnursery.com. Send us photos if you've got quandaries. If not, we can, we can generally give you a call back, help you answer most of your questions. Come to the nursery if you want to look at our fruit trees. We've got a ton of fruit trees right now. Um, Not right now, I don't think. No? No, we're low on fruit right now. They'll come in, usually at the beginning of March, they'll come in dormant. Oh, okay, um, that's so, right. Which is a nice time to buy fruit trees, y'all. Buy them when they're early. They're going to be fresh. They're not going to have leaves on them. That's a good time to prune them as well before you put them in the ground. Get them pruned up, have the shape you want before you ever plant them.